Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Victor Studio and to do a quick video to share with you how to use our timer content pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so once you've purchased the pack, you will get this zip file. Just double click on it to unzip it. It will give you a folder. In the folder, you have a couple of things. You got the license, the installation instruction, the fonts, and the GRFX file to install. First, make sure to install all the fonts included, otherwise the title will not work because DaVinci will not know what font to use. So just select all the fonts in that font folder and double click on them to start the installation process. Once that's done, you can go over to the DRFX file and double click on it to prompt open the installation window and select install. Right now, I already have the pack installed, so it's asking me to overwrite, but just select install. Then once you're in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to Effect, Titles, Visitor Studio, and then here you can just scroll the, all the way down to timer counter pack. And then here you will find 40 different timer titles that you can use for your videos. We have a pretty big diversity of timer counter that you can use, but they all share exactly the same functionality. I went over those functionality in our sample video, and you can download the sample with the link in the description below. That way you can get your head around how this title work and see if that will be a good fit for your project. There is already a lot that you can do with that sample, but then with the full pack, you just have access to a wider range of of designs. Since all those timer titles are sharing exactly the same functionality and only the design differ, I'm going to show you how to use the sample title, but that will apply to every single title in this pack. So you can start by dragging the title in the timeline. The first thing that you need to know is that there is three different types of animation going on right here. We have the classic animation in and out for the uh, title to come in and out of the frame. We have a constant animation of that circle that represents the passage of time. And then we have the actual uh, time being displayed. All of those are independent from each other and you can adjust them in different way. So first thing with the simple animation in and out, as usual, like every of all title, you have all the control right here. You can control the animation length in second. So right now for the title to come in, it take about one second. You can increase or decrease that by here, uh, switching for, for example, three seconds. If you do that, as you can see now, the title will take about three seconds to fully come into frame. You can also choose between different type of movement. Right now we have zoom in, but you can select, for example, slide down and if you do so the title will come into place from the top of the frame down to the center you can also choose the curve so here you have the in and out curve by default it's in expo uh, but you have the choice between a bunch of different curves for example here if you choose elastic or bounce you're gonna get like a, a slight bounce when the title will come into frame. Personally, I tend to prefer Expo or Scene. That's what gives the more natural look. That's why that's the default setting. Another thing that we just added is the animation intensity. So right now it's at 0.2 and I will recommend to leave it that way because it's more subtle in my opinion. It's basically the movement from the frame to the center. So right now, as you can see, it's not coming from too far. But if I were to uh, switch that to 0.8, for example, now the title will come from almost outside of the frame into place right here. So it's just, you know, depending on you uh, and depending on the movement that you want, you can adjust that. I will recommend again to leave it at two to have a more subtle movement. And then here you have the same control over the animation out. So here you can choose the animation out length to be a different length than the animation in. Right now we put three seconds, but for example, right now we're left at half a second for the animation out. So it's up to you to change the length of that animation out. You can also change the movement of that animation. So here, same thing, we can choose to have pan right for example which means that right now for the animation in is going to go from top to center and then it's going to exit from center to right so that's for the basic in and out animation of that title now let's talk about the main perk of that title which is the time display and here that visualizer so first let's talk about the circle visualizer basically here at the beginning of the title it's starting and then when we're reaching the end of the title, it's closing that loop. This is going to automatically adapt depending on the length of your title. So here, if I were to extend that title, for example, now you'll see that uh, basically the visualizer are going to take more time to complete. So if I scroll through it now, as you can see, it's matching our composition. 
to extend your title, you can just here drag the edges. That might sometimes take a second to load because there is just a bunch of tool going on right here. Another way will be simply to right click on the title and then select change clip duration. And then you can input the duration that you want. If for example, you want to have uh, 15 seconds, you can do that right here. If you want to have a minute here, I'm gonna switch that to zero, zero. And then here we're gonna enter one minute and we're gonna select a change. And now, as you can see, my composition is now a full minute in my timeline. And again, the visualizer has adapted to that. We have the possibility to count up and count down. I'm gonna share that in a second when we're gonna talk about the timer itself. Here for the visualizer, you can choose to invert that progress. So for example, right now it's going in that direction. We can select here in circle, invert progress, and basically it will go in the other direction. So that's gonna help you to do either a count up or a count down. Now for the timer itself, there is many ways to use it. You can either have it only a adapted to the timeline or you can display your own time a starting point and ending point so the first thing is that here you can choose to display hour minute and frame so you can just toggle those things to display each of those elements uh, right now it was only in minute and second but you choose to have instead only second and frame only thing is that if you do that obviously uh, right now we're trying to display 32 minutes for example therefore it's just gonna break that down into a second so just pick the right uh, way of displaying depending on the amount of time that you want to display I hope that makes sense so let me show you the two way of displaying time there is one that is adaptable and there is one that can allow you to display whatever you want so the first thing is here if you want to have that timer matching your timeline the same way as that visualizer just make sure that here in hour minute and second you have everything set to zero if you set everything here to zero the timer will start from zero and will count up until the title is over so right now we've selected a minute so basically we're gonna have uh, the counter counting up to one minute and this will match the visualizer ring that we have now you can also invert that so for example if instead of counting up from zero to one you want to count down from one to zero you can do that right now by selecting count down and now we're gonna start at one and we're gonna go all the way down to zero and again remember here we can also invert the visualizer depending on what we represent generally if you want to come down it's probably better to have this inverted that way the counter gonna basically go down and the visualizer gonna go down as well and if you want to come up that's probably better to have this and tick that way it's gonna count up and the visualizer gonna progress in the full direction now that's one way to adapt that timer to have it adaptable and uh, matching the in and out point of the timeline uh, the other way is if you want to represent a certain amount of time passing and having that uh, being accelerated for example if you don't need to display a counter for like a full minute 10 minutes 15 minutes etc but you just want to represent the passage of time in let's say a five second sequence you could do that fairly easily let me show you how so here i'm going to change the duration we're going to do let's say five seconds to do that i can again right click here and change clip duration or i can use the shortcut command d and then here it just prompt open the same change clip duration window i'm going to select five seconds i'm going to select change so now obviously the counter is only counting from zero to five seconds but we can use that to either animate each of those value or starting the counter to um, a specific value let's say here uh, we want to only show a specific amount of time so in minutes i could select let's say 25 minutes and now as you can see it's gonna count you know five seconds but from 25 minutes or like if i do come down it's gonna come down from whatever value we have down to 25 so you can really choose that to set up your starting point or your ending point uh, that you want to display at the end of the animation another thing if you want to show the passage of time fast um, what you can do is simply here selecting let's say zero and then we can keyframe that so i'm gonna go here at the beginning i'm gonna have zero minutes keyframe that and I'm gonna go at the end of my title and now uh, I'm gonna here write 30 minutes and if I play it as you can see within the time of five seconds I have the timer counting up to 30 minutes 
So that could be a great way to display the passage of time very fast, for example, in a time lapse or something like that, where you just want to accelerate that timer. Now, one thing to know is that here, as you can see, we have the number staying in place. It's because we specifically choose a monofont, which allow the uh, number to be displayed in that way. If you were to change that to any other font, let's say we generally like to use the font pop-in. But if we were using pop-in here, um, the number going to be changing place all the time and that's not going to look very good so just be aware of that and if you would like to change the font make sure that you're using a mono font and not like uh, any generic font you can find a bunch of them online just search for mono font and uh, you can uh, download that on uh, google font or any other font website and lastly here we have text intensity which is basically the amount of blur in between each number when they are changing from one to the other so here if i increase that i'm gonna get more blur uh, when the number are uh, going to change. So depending on how fast your number are changing, uh, you can use that to intensify the effect. That is pretty much it for all the functionality that this specific title got to offer. You get the general size and position. So here you can reduce the size, you can uh, adjust the position. Then you also have the uh, timer style. So here, same thing. You can adjust the style of the timer specifically, uh, the tracking in between the number, uh, the line spacing, uh, so on and so forth. And you also have here the select element area that allow you to make some more customization. Let's say you have a busy background and you want your timer to stand out even more uh, you can here select between different uh, useful stuff so here you have some text border you get some text shadow you get some text background all of them are disabled at the moment but if you click enable as you can see right now you're gonna have like a background that is auto adjusted to the text you can then adjust the size of that background you can adjust if you want to have straight corner or rounded corner um, you can switch the color as well so on and so forth so here you can basically toggle in between all of them then the last one is here a circle we have the inverted progress like i mentioned earlier you can also adjust the general border width so here, if you want to have a thinner visualizer, you can do that. You can also adjust the overall width of that timer. Just be careful to not expand it too much because otherwise uh, you're going to start to clip here in the frame. So uh, you can increase that, but just don't do it too much. Um, and then you have the general color of the background ring and of the visualizer ring as well. By default, we put a gradient, but you can switch easily here to solid color and you will get a solid color instead that you can adjust right here. If you want to have something pink, you can do that right there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this video was clear. There is uh, definitely a lot of functionality uh, and stuff back in that one title. Uh, so I hope that was not too confusing, but I think that can be a very, very useful tool for any editor. And that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna share with you each of the individual titles considering that they have exactly the same functionality as I've mentioned, only the design differ. So you can check those design right now on the screen um, to see all the individual design. You can also watch all preview video available on the product page of that pack. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.